Hey all, I'm James, and I build in miniature. This week, we're going to be taking a look at my formula for water effects. Welcome to Fox Hollow Models. Ah, the sounds of the ocean. So serene, so soothing. It calls to you like a siren of old, drawing you closer, and closer, and closer. In all seriousness though, this type of water effect couldn't be more simple. It's also relatively cheap in case you're not flush with all that sweet resin money because your significant other holds onto the money like an angry tight-fisted gorilla. So let's get going. Alright ladies and germs, so this is where it begins. Uh, this is your, your basic XPS foam. Uh, you can get it at Home Depot, Lowe's, whatever big box store, or get it at Ace Hardware, wherever you're going to go. Uh, I have masked it off in a border of blue painter's tape. Uh, if you want to, that is a barking dog. If you want to use really expensive Tamiya tape, you're welcome to do so. This is about a dollar and a half a roll, so cheap. Uh, this is about, this is an inch thick, so, basic foam. Uh, now, what I did with the Enterprise diorama was I covered the top of the foam with um, plaster of Paris. Uh, and that was just so I could raise the top up a little bit without having to use layer after layer after layer of Mod Podge and other things. I'm trying to keep this as cheap as possible. Um, I'm not going to do that for this one because it works just fine without it. Again, it was just to build the layer up a little higher so it looked like from the side there was a little bit more depth. Next. This stuff. It's silicon. It's, that, that's literally all it is. Uh, they do not sell this at Lowe's anymore. Lowe's no longer sells DAP, or at least if they do still have it, they are getting rid of it. At least that's what they told me. Um, I have used the uh, the uh, the stuff that's white and then goes clear uh, in the past. Uh, this stuff, which is the uh, the the crystal clear, uh, this is about two to three dollars more per tube. Uh, however, I have found that when it comes out crystal clear without having to wait for it to, to, to dry and whatnot, I, I can do my molds and, and waveforms and whatnot without having to worry about, well, what's this going to look like when it's clear or waiting for it to go from, you know, white to clear. Um, this stuff just works good for me. You can certainly use any kind of silicon you want. If you want to use the other stuff, that's fine. Uh, I just, I like the clear. Uh, that's just my personal take on it. Next is everybody's favorite X23. It's clear blue. This is going to get layered on with the uh, the Mod Podge. Uh, well, in between the layers. Um, this is not what takes the longest to dry. It's the Mod Podge. Um, but this stuff, when you put it on top of Mod Podge, it gets very, very sticky. Uh, so you need to be gentle with it, right? These are the two that I'm going to be using for uh, the actual coloring of the foam. Uh, obviously the, the deep blue on the recesses and this green is going to be uh, more or less on the inside. Now yes, these are the cheaper paints. I think I picked these up at Walmart. I think this one was like 50 cents and this one was like a dollar. I, I don't know. It, it, it's not the most expensive paint in the world, but hey, uh, you, all you're doing is blending. So if you feel like you need to use something more expensive, go for it. Uh, this is where I'm at. The last thing you need to worry about is Mod Podge. Uh, this is the Gloss Luster, obviously. I buy these in the bigger canisters. Uh, I buy them at Walmart. I pay, uh, I think these are eight or nine dollars for this size. Uh, this one bottle will last a very long time. Um, I've got the Titanic diorama that I'm doing. It's just, it is a huge diorama and I will probably end up using two of these bottles uh, to make the layers that I need for that, a combination of that and the, the silicon. So 
That being aside, now that you have your materials other than the, you know, the brushes and things that you're going to need, let's get going. So the first thing that we need to worry about is getting the base coat on here. Uh, so with the two paints that we're going to be using, the, the, you know, the, the light blue to kind of show more shallow water and then the dark blue to show the deeper water. The first thing we're going to do is obviously shake the paint up because it's acrylic and it gets gummy quite quickly. Uh, I am just going to put enough of it around the edges. Now, I don't care what brush you use. I really don't. I got these last, this set of brushes last Christmas. I don't know what my wife paid for them. I know they were kind of cheapos, but I'm not too worried about it. All I want to do is get that paint all the way to the edge. All right? I'm not looking for perfect. In fact, the more random it looks, the better it's going to be. Try to make sure that the the edges there are a lot deeper than anything else. Now, obviously, if you wanted to go the other way around, you would do the green on the outside and the dark blue on the middle, depending on if, it, let's say, if this was a pond, you'd want this to be the deep end and this to be the shallow end, in which case you would reverse the paints. The way I'm doing this is the shallow and then the dark on the outside. So, let's get a smaller brush and we're going to do the same thing while it's still wet it'll blend better we are going to give us quite a relatively thick dollop right there in the middle and I'm just going to feather it out so switch back to my other paintbrush which I still have and come back in blend this until I have something resembling lighter going into darker and darker going into lighter and the great news about this is is it doesn't matter how perfect it looks you can just keep going back and forth eventually you're gonna run out of blend but you can keep going back and forth until you have the blending you want right this is starting to look kind of like a tidal vortex it's actually kind of cool so let's get some extra divot in there kind of mix in that blue a little bit into the middle get that paint scheme down now because all modelers are patient individuals who have nothing but time on their hands and the ability to just sit and watch paint dry we're just gonna sit here and watch this dry any day now all right forget this I'm getting the I, I, I'm getting the heat gun so heat guns and paint ie heat guns and paint on styrofoam this thing will melt that in a matter of seconds if you're not careful. If your heat gun like mine has this nifty dial on it, you can tune it down. However, keeping it all the way down here at the most minimum setting can still melt that. So you have got to be careful. And keep in mind too, we put a pretty thick coating of paint on here. Uh, it's probably half a mil thick, so fairly, fairly thick in that regard. 
And the reason we did that is because I want to be able to extract as much depth out of this as we as I possibly can. This X23 and the Mod Podge are really going to go a long way to bringing in the depth to this project. Um, I am going to dry this off and I will be right back. One thing I'd like to point out that I forgot to mention before, this one is a matte and this one is a satin. They're both acrylic paints. It doesn't really matter if you're using matte, if you're using satin, if you're using gloss, you can get virtually, and I say virtually, the same effect regardless of what you do and that's mostly because the Mod Podge is going to create the depth layers for you. However, if you really, and I mean seriously want to make it pop, do everything in gloss. Um, it will go a hundred times farther. However, I do warn you, the gloss, believe it or not, is more fragile than the uh, uh, than the uh, satin or the matte. Uh, and what I mean fragile is when you put that Mod Podge on there, it has a tendency to stick to the paint, and if you move it, it will it'll it'll tear the paint. Um, so if you're going to use gloss or even satin. Make 100% sure, without a doubt, that it is dry before you put that Mod Podge on there. Because if you put it on there and it's still wet, it's going to tear it, and you're going to have to start over, and it's going to suck. And I don't know if you've ever had tried to remove paint from Styrofoam, but no. You're going to end up either trashing it or painting over the entire thing and starting over, and it sucks. So safe route go with matte it's faster too you want the longer route but more depth go with the gloss all right ladies and germs now comes the fun part this is relatively dried uh like i was saying earlier the the the, the acrylic uh it dries a lot faster um matte dries a lot faster than the gloss does don't ask me why i don't understand the science of it i don't care I just want it to dry. Um, but if I can do this and not tear the paint, we're okay. Uh, another thing that globbing that paint on there does, I'm not sure if you can see it all that well, but you get these, where the paint was globbed up, you get these little raises, okay? And those little relief raises are going to show up on the Mod Podge layer. And it's going to, at, at the end of it, it's going to, give us kind of a wave effect. Um, but the first thing we're going to do is we're going to seal this with the Mod Podge. So let's go ahead and do that. Oh, it's crackling. Right. This is one of those times when it doesn't really matter what brush you use, yet again. This stuff doesn't have to go on particularly smooth. Uh, but the less bubbles you can get out of it, the better. Now, you can't really use the stippling motion. Well, you can. But I find it's better to kind of go very light on that if you're going to use a stippling motion. Especially on something this small. On a larger model, I would probably just put it on there and let it go around. Now, the Mod Podge, as you can see, it's going to go on. And like I said, if the paint underneath is wet, it's just going to turn the Mod Podge into a weird color and it's going to look bad. So, set that aside. And I'm just going to let it glide. Get it into all the corners. The Mod Podge, when it dries, uh, it's kind of like resin in a way that it, it, it gasses, which means uh, the air trapped within there because it's a water-soluble. It's basically PVA in water. Um, but as it dries, it gasses, which means it breathes, and all the air bubbles come off. And if it dries too fast, all those little air bubbles uh, are going to dry like that and you'll have these little pock marks everywhere um so watch out for that there's not really a way to rush 
drying Mod Podge. It's, it's really just sit there and wait for it to dry. Do, 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 do. Do, do, do. Isn't this fun? Like I said, it's like watching paint dry. Oh, good lord, look at that dog hair. I have dogs. Incredible. Now, this is where the silliness comes in. Now, with resin, normally we could just go in here and uh, draw some heat on it or blow on it, and it'll take care of some of those bubbles. It'll bring them to the surface. However, this is Mod Podge, and it's occasionally evil. So, toothpick, and come in here, and do your best to get these bubbles out. Get you that smooth surface on the bottom. 